Hi, this is Paul from School Bus Talk. On this episode, we're going to discuss pre-trip inspection of a 2021 Bluebird Vision electric school bus and the techniques I use for operating the heat system on the bus. So I'm going to demonstrate how I pre-trip an electric school bus and get the heat up on the school electric school bus. It's a little bit different than how I would do it for a diesel or propane school bus. So I'm here in Northern California. It's January about 5.50 a.m. in the morning. Uh, it's about 44 degrees Fahrenheit or seven degrees Celsius. Uh, you know, this is a typical uh, Northern California morning. Now I know my relatives in Alaska scoff at uh, saying this is a winter's morning. They call it t-shirt and flip-flop weather. Uh, but for us, this is a, a typical winter morning. So I have already unplugged the school bus. I'm gonna demonstrate uh, how I pre-trip this bus and the techniques that I use to get the heat up. So the first thing I always do when coming on the electric school bus is I turn the ignition to initialization to make sure that I did get a good charge overnight. And I'm showing that I have 83.9 miles, which is typical for this bus. And what I'm gonna do differently is I'm gonna do the brake air brake test first on the electric school bus, then go outside and do my outside check, my lights, and then come back inside. So I start with air brakes because I wanna sit down and make sure that I have a full charge. You do the air brakes test on the electric school bus the same way it's done on a diesel bus. Instead, you use the initialization and enabled key settings for the air governor cut in and cut out, static and applied pressure tests, and splitting the tanks test of the emergency braking system. Now that I have completed the air brake check, and I do that first because the first thing I do is check how much charge is on the bus. Now I do the external check and light check. Now on a diesel bus, I would do the external check first and then do the light check. But on the electric school bus, I do air brakes first and then I check the lights. All right, done my external check on the electric school bus. Now I come in and I start doing all my emergency exit doors, my internal check, making sure all my emergency exits are clear. I'm making sure that I've got no trash or anything in the aisles, making sure all the seat belts are in function. Checking my fire extinguisher, first aid kit, road triangles, spill kit, emergency spill kit. Making sure my emergency release works. All right, this bus now is ready to check out. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how I bring heat up on the bus. Bringing up the heat on the bus, a little bit different than a diesel bus. In my first video, I demonstrated a technique where you get the bus completely checked out. Then you plug it back in turn on the heat switch. Now I was using that technique most of last winter, but this winter I've been using a different technique. In this winter, I, what I've been doing is I put the bus first in vehicle enabled, which means the bus is ready to roll. I have the parking brake set, so it's not gonna move, but if I take off the parking brake and put it in drive, it will roll. Then what I do is I turn the heat switch on and I turn on the heat fans, the front fan with the defrost on first, and I turn the heat fan for the coach on to start warming up the bus for the kids. What I wanna show here is, let's look at this. 
I'm now at 82.6 miles, which is down a little bit from when I came to the bus and it had a full charge. And I am at 19,556 miles, you know, point uh, with eight tenths. Now it's 6, 16 a.m. The heater switch is on and I have the fans running. I'm gonna leave the bus like this for about 10 minutes or so. So I'll come back in 10 minutes and I'll show you what the impact is on the battery. I've had the heat running on the low fan settings for about 10 minutes now, bringing the inside of the bus, getting the warmth up, uh, running the defroster. And I wanna show you, so now we're looking at the gauges and you'll see that it's now 80.2 miles to empty which is means uh, fully depleted charge and you'll see that it's 627 so I've been running the heat in the heat fans for about 10 minutes and it's come down oh, about oh, four miles yeah, the charge has come down about four miles, so I now have 80 miles of charge left. What I'm gonna do now is run my morning route, which is an in-town route, with the heat on, fans on the low setting, and at the end of the route, I'm gonna show you the impact on the range comparing the odometer to the charge range and what the battery life is running the bus with the heat on. Hey kids, come on aboard. Happy Friday, everybody. One thing I want to show about the heating unit in the electric school bus is that it uses um, thermal fluid, which is heated by electric resistance. And there is an additional valve that you have to turn on in addition to the heat switch. And the valve for controlling the heat on the bus is down here in the lower left side of the driver's compartment. So you have to have that valve on as well as the heat switch on so that electric resistance can heat the thermal fluid which then flows out to the fan, which is in the forward control unit for the defroster and driver's heater, and the heater that's in the back of the bus that heats the coach. I've completed my AM route, and let's look at how the bus did with the heat on. Now, I had the heater switch on for the entire route and the fans on low, and you can see here that Based on the odometer, I went about 20 miles on this in-town route, but the amount of charge that was used decreased to 51.6 miles. So a 20 mile route on the odometer was a 32 mile reduction on the battery charge. That means that if you're operating the heater and the, on the bus, the entire time you're operating, the odometer and the charge range, there's about a 38% difference between those two. What I'm finding is that the amount of amperage that's needed to heat the thermal fluid to warm up the bus is quite great. And it's not really that cold here. I'm operating the bus at the low fan settings and it's using a fair amount of amperage. The heating system use a, uses a lot more power than the air conditioning system. I find in hot days when I'm operating the air conditioning to remove heat from the inside of the bus or to cool the bus, it doesn't really impact the range 
on the uh, battery life. Now that I'm done with the route, the next thing I do is I immediately plug in the bus so that I am ready for my PM route. And by the time I get back in the afternoon, it will be recharged back to about 84 miles. That wraps up this episode of School Bus Talk. Remember, safety is essential. Thank you.